Welcome back to Turning Hard Times into Good Times. I'm your host, Jay Taylor, and I'm really glad to have with me for the first time Malcolm Davidson. He's the treasurer of Avino Silver and Gold Mines. Uh, Malcolm joined Avino Silver and Gold back in 2010, and prior to that, uh, his background is in accounting and the accounting field, and uh, he uh, certainly has been uh, a, a great addition to this company. I've known this company for many years, and of course, many of you have listened in the past to me speak with David uh, David Wolfen, who's the president and CEO of the company. But it's really good to have you with me, Malcolm. Thanks for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me, Jay. Really, uh, really good to talk to you. You know, before we get started, I should just tell our listeners uh, your stock trades in the United States on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol ASM, and the same symbol, I believe, in Toronto. Uh, 36.4 million shares outstanding, uh, selling at about a dollar 11 uh, when this is being recorded on Thursday um, prior to the show. And uh, in fact, um, one of the things I've really liked about Avino is a conscious effort to hold the share structure in place and not to allow the number of shares to get blown out. And I think that people who own this stock now, especially uh, with the rising production of Avino and also uh, if we're seeing a real turnaround and a rise in the price of silver, uh, you know, owning companies uh, with few shares outstanding and rising profits is a lot better than owning companies with zillions of shares outstanding and rising profits. So, uh, with that said, uh, I'd like to get into this discussion. You guys just announced your earnings for c- the second quarter of this year, uh, and you're making money uh, in spite of the dismal silver prices. Talk to us a little bit about your uh, performance during the second quarter of Avino Gold and Silver? Well, certainly. Uh, we recently uh, published our Q2 financial statements uh, earlier this week, and uh, we're very pleased with our financial results. Uh, as we all know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty tough out there, and, and a lot of our uh, a lot of mining companies are showing losses and, and uh, certainly some hard times out there. But Avino is, you know, we're, we're working hard at it, and we had uh, another good quarter. Uh, the, in Q2, we um, generated 5.9 million in revenue. Mine operating income was 2.3 million. Uh, earnings for the period were uh, about $400,000, and uh, earning one cent per share. Yeah, one one cent for share. Uh, you know, for for a company, uh, what, what were your earnings in the first quarter? Or did you show earnings the first quarter? I can't remember exactly, but you've certainly would been cash flow positive through the first uh, six yeah, months. Yeah, very similar. Um, you know, this, uh, it, you know, one cent doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, in, in this market, uh, it, it certainly is um, very strong. Well, you had operating profits of I think you, you just said two point three million on five point nine in sales. Yeah, we had one one million. Uh, sorry, one cent uh, uh, earnings per share in the first yeah. quarter. Yeah, one cent earnings per share. Uh, but after you've addressed all your expenses, your corporate overhead, your cash, uh, your non-cash expenses, and everything else to show a profit in this market. Uh, but you know, of course, if if I thought that you were only going to do one cent a share per quarter. I'd say, all right, well, your stock is selling at $1.11. I'm not going to pay more than that for it. But I know uh, that you have some real, relatively aggressive growth uh, projections into the future. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, well, earlier this year, on January 1, we began processing new material in Mill Circuit 3 uh, from the recently reopened Avino mine. Uh, so we'll be adding that uh, production um, to uh, uh, to our, our results this year, um, San Gonzalo continues to um, be uh, operating very well. We're very happy with the results; uh, very strong. Um, you know, looking uh, you know a year or two down the road, we're uh, also considering um, you know moving towards the oxide tailings, which uh, which we've talked about in the past. So we've got a lot of good projects. Um, we've got uh, you know over a dozen uh, old mines uh, and potential on the Vino mine site uh, in Mexico. Um, so there's lots lots of opportunities and, and lots of uh, uh, things to take advantage of in the coming years. Has the company provided any guidance on its production uh, uh, expectations? Um, no, we it's it's tough. We get asked that question quite a bit, but we don't have a feasibility study and reserves. It's uh, it's very difficult. We we basically we can't we can't give guidance at this time. But, okay. Um, in in the future, hopefully that will change. Well, fair enough. And you do have a history of operations, and and it's been going very well, even in these weak markets. But talk to us a little bit. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your costs. 
per silver equivalent ounce, and and maybe give us an idea of how much silver you've produced through the first six months, and, and more specifically the last quarter, and sure. and then gold and copper as well, because those are uh, significant byproducts, really. They are. Um, you know, since we began production at San Gonzalo in Q4 uh, 2012, uh, we've continued to uh, decrease our uh, cash cost per ounce. Uh, in the most recent quarter, our cash cost per ounce was 867, and our all-in sustaining cash cost was 1172. So those are very, very, very strong numbers. Um, we've been working hard at, at keeping our costs down and uh, being efficient with our operations. Uh, and in this market, we, you know, with soft and metal prices, we're, we're continuing to look at uh, additional ways to reduce costs uh, and maintain our efficiencies. Um, uh, this this year uh, to date, uh, we've produced uh, 794,000 silver equivalent ounces from the Zeno mine, and at San Gonzalo, uh, we've produced 458,000 uh, silver equivalent ounces. A very strong uh, uh, results. Um, you know, we're continuing to add uh, add to our production. Um, we're looking forward uh, to the future when we actually take Avino from being more of an advancement and development project into production. Uh, a lot of our shareholders have asked us about that, uh, and management continues to to review uh, making a production decision. So we, we hope to have uh, uh, some additional information later this year on that. You uh, mentioned that you're continuing to look for ways to uh, improve your operations and lower your cost. Uh, could you give our listeners some sense of, of what some of those things might be that you're doing? And uh, and then also talk about how you've just raised $10 million to finance those. Sure. Um, I mean, at the moment, we, we do run a, a very lean operation. Uh, we're very proud of that. So it's, it's, it's very tough for Avino you know, to look for additional ways to reduce costs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've got a good labor force, uh, very efficient. Um, but you, know, you can always do things... You can, you can always do things better, and you can always do things more efficiently. Um, so we're looking at every possible way to uh, to be more efficient and cut costs uh, for supplies uh, where we can. Um, we're also continuing to purchase brand new equipment, uh, which is very efficient, and that also helps to bring down our production costs. Mm-hmm. And you and you know one of the things, that, as I mentioned when I introduced you, that uh, that I like about Avino is you've kept your share structure, your number of shares down at thirty six point four million shares. I mean that's an unheard of number for a company that's been around as long as Avino. But uh, you, you know, w- you raised ten million dollars, and I think uh, talk to our listeners a little bit of how you did that because I think that's you did it without share dilution, which is what I love as a shareholder. Well, over a year ago, uh, David Wolf and our CEO uh, was giving a presentation in Europe, and one of Samsung's representatives uh, attended the presentation and, and really liked uh, the presentation and the Avina story. Uh, so this individual approached David afterwards and, and got to know him a little bit better. And um, so over the last year and a half, uh, Samsung's continued to, to show more interest in uh, Avino, uh, not just the Avino mine, but also San Gonzalo. Uh, so earlier this year, they, they, um, sort of said, look, you know, we really, we really want to get something done with you guys. We like the management team. We like the project. So Samsung went down to, uh, uh, to the mine site in, uh, in January, uh, with their due diligence team and had a look at everything and they were very, very impressed with the operation, the management team and the potential for Avino. Uh, so, uh, since January, we've continued to, to work with their, uh, their senior team at, uh, putting together an arrangement, a prepaid arrangement, uh, that worked, uh, worked well for Avino and, and Samsung. So recently we, uh, we closed that transaction, uh, and we were able to put $10 million in the bank, uh, without diluting our current shareholders. Uh, it's you know it's it's music to my ears honestly. Uh, you also uh, you know you you've you've been known as a silver producer primarily. Although the name and you also have gold in the name of your company, and yep. you've uh, recently acquired the Braylorn Gold Mine in British Columbia. Talk to our listeners a little bit about how that how that came about, and also what are your plans for the Braylorn Gold Mine? Oh, okay. Um, well, Braylon's in, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's got a very rich history. Um, it's got uh, a lot of potential. 
Um, we've worked closely with Braylorn for, for many years. Uh, Braylorn previously operated out of our office, so we, we know the management team, we know the project quite well. Uh, David Wilson's uh, father uh, founded the company, and, and uh, so there's a long, long history with David and his father with Braylorn. But uh, the company was uh, undercapitalized and, and in a tough spot, and uh, if you know, looked at the you know, we did our due diligence and had a good look at the mine and realized that there was a lot of potential there. So we moved forward with the acquisition. So we completed that in November. Um, since then, we've, uh, uh, we're continuing to review mine plans because we'd like to have the operation up and, up and running. But uh, at the moment, we're uh, doing a tailing raise. Um, most people have heard of the incident at Mount Polly, and uh, we want to make sure that our tailing facility is... is uh, uh, top notch, and, and we're not going to have any issues. So, starting next week, uh, we'll be starting a tailings raise, a 10 foot tailings raise. We anticipate that will take uh, anywhere from six to eight weeks. And once that's done, uh, we plan to resume operations. So, at the moment, the the operation is quite small. We're producing; uh, it has the capability of producing about 100 tons per day. It's permitted for 500 tons per day, but it's going to take uh, some work and some capital to uh, to make mill improvements to get up to that uh, that type of production. So, uh, at the moment, we we just want to get uh, get the operation running and generating some cash flow, uh, which we can then use towards uh, putting towards exploration and finding more resources. So you'll start out with 100 tons per day, and I, I believe this is a, a fairly high grade uh, underground. Deposit. I don't know if you're willing to talk about grades. I guess maybe you, you, you're going to just let the uh, the numbers talk for themselves at this point in time, or do you have you know, a resource at, there? At the moment, uh, the resource uh, I believe was done, I think, in the '70s, so it's uh, it's pretty outdated. It's out of date uh, and not compliant with uh, with regulations at this time. That's right. So um, uh, you know, once we get the mill up and running, uh, we'll definitely be moving forward with uh, some exploration to find additional resources and. Um, at the same time, we'd like to expand the output capabilities of the mill um, and get it to 500 tons per day. But it's going to take some time and it's going to take some money. Well, organic growth is, is what you referred to in your press release uh, just last week, and that's another thing that I like about you. Of course, that's why you've been able to keep your shares uh, share numbers down. But uh, growing this thing organically, I guess you start out small and raise capital and use the uh, raise the cash flow and earnings and use that then to grow the Braylorn, just as you have uh, in the past down in Mexico with your silver operations. But let me ask you this, Malcolm: you have um, you know you have a one cent per share uh, earnings for the last quarter the last quarter that you just talked about. Give me a sense of what uh, you know. What is the sensitivity? Uh, to the price of silver with your Mexican silver operations now? Because, you know, if we're at a turn in the silver market and the gold market, and I, I sort of believe that could very be, well be the case, uh, then, you know, not only increased production in Mexico, but also increased profit margins might be expected. Can you give our listeners some sense of what a dollar of, you know, a dollar uh, in the price of silver might mean either to the Increase or decrease in the in the profits or cash flows of of Avino. Oh sure, I mean we're all very sensitive to, to metal prices, and we certainly don't want to see them go any lower. Um, but uh, as we talked about, Avino's got a very low uh, all-in sustaining cash cost at eleven seventy-two. Mm-hmm. So you know if metal prices do decrease by say a dollar uh, silver price, um, you know, we, they'll still be profitable. And we still have uh, we still have a healthy margin. If it goes the other way, well, we'll be very happy. <laughs> you can just start so, uh, it. So, yeah. so we're, we're in a good we're in a good position. Our, our numbers are strong, but you know we have to, to really really keep an eye on our costs, and as I mentioned, you know find ways to reduce costs um, and be more efficient because we, we really need to protect that cash cost uh, so that we can absorb uh, sensitivity. 
Well, I think, uh, you know, the company's done a great job of, of doing that in the past, and I, I guess maybe the challenge might be, Malcolm, and it might be a good challenge to have, would be when times get good, can you keep the costs down and under control? Because that's when uh, when companies make a lot of mistakes. We've seen that happen, of course, in the, with some of the bigger guys, uh, you know, with, with gold running up to $1,900, they got kind of crazy and paid a lot, way too much in some cases for the projects they acquired, and uh, and then had to um, mothball them or, or write them down or whatever. But uh, but clearly, uh, I, you know, this is one I really like. It's been a recommendation in my newsletter for a number of years, long before uh, Avino became a, a recommendation. And, you know, I've known Louis Wolfen uh, for decades, probably before you were born, Malcolm. And uh, but <laughs> I, I, So I, my history goes back a long ways, and I've known the people. And, you know, it really boils down to people, doesn't it? The it does. Management. Uh, and and I think David is doing a fantastic job, and I'm really glad that you've you've joined the company as well, Malcolm. And I, you know, if, is there anything else you'd like to uh, tell our listeners before we conclude our discussion today? No, uh, no. I mean, we appreciate uh, we appreciate the support, and um, we like hearing from everybody, shareholders, potential shareholders. Um, we have an open door policy. Uh, you know, people have the ear of the CFO, the CEO, and, and anybody else here anytime. Good. Uh, and we'd like to hear from people. So. Uh, Give us a call. Any questions? You know, visit our website and uh, you know, keep current and have a look at our news releases and, and uh, come see us and come ask us questions anytime. Very good. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, let me just mention also, it's avino.com is the website, and you can go there to listen to a discussion of the conference call that you had, I, I believe, just last week, Malcolm, discussing the. Uh, the latest quarterly earnings. So, uh, well, thank you very much for being with us, and uh, well, I really uh, look forward to talking to you again sometime, perhaps after the next quarter. Thank you very much. 